Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Manson Family The Manson family was a quasi-commune that arose in California in the late 1960s, led by Charles Manson. They gained national notoriety after the infamous murder of actress Sharon Tate and four others on August 8, 1969 by Tex Watson and three other members of the family. Acting under the instructions of Manson, group members were also responsible for a number of other murders and assaults, and the attempted assassination of President Gerald Ford. San Francisco Followers on his release day, March 21, 1967, Manson received permission to move to San Francisco, where, with the help of a prison acquaintance, he moved into an apartment in Berkeley. In prison, bank robber Alvin Carpus had taught him to play the steel guitar. Now, living mostly by panhandling, he soon got to know Mary Brunner a 23-year-old graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Brunner was working as a library assistant at University of California, Berkeley, and Manson moved in with her. According to a second-hand account, he overcame her resistance to his bringing other women in to live with them. Before long, they were sharing Brunner's residence with 18 other women. Manson established himself as a guru in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury, which during 1967's Summer of Love was emerging as the signature hippie locale. Vincent Bugliosi said in his book Helter Skelter that Manson appeared to have borrowed philosophically from the Process Church, whose members believed Satan would become reconciled to Christ, and they would come together at the end of the world to judge humanity. Expounding a philosophy that included some of the Scientology he had studied in prison, he soon had the first of his groups of followers, which have been called the Manson family, most of them female. Upon a staff evaluation of Manson when he entered prison in July 1961, at the U.S. Penitentiary in McNeil Island, Washington, Manson entered Scientologist as his religion. Manson taught his followers that they were the reincarnation of the original Christians, and the Romans were the establishment. He himself strongly implied that he was Christ. He often told a story envisioning himself on the cross with the nails in his feet and hands. Sometime around 1967, he began using the alias Charles Willis Manson. He often said him very slowly implying that his will was the same as that of the Son of Man. Before the summer ended, Manson and eight or nine of his enthusiasts piled into an old school bus they had re-wrought in hippie style, with colored rugs and pillows in place of the many seats they had removed. They roamed as far north as Washington State, then southward through Los Angeles, Mexico, and the southwest. Returning to the Los Angeles area, they lived in Topanga Canyon, Malibu, and Venice, western parts of the city and county. It was November when the school bus set out from San Francisco with the enlarged group. In 1967, Brunner became pregnant by Manson and on April 15, 1968, gave birth to a son she named Valentine Michael in a condemned house in Topanga Canyon, assisted during the birth by several of the young women from the family. Brunner acquired a number of aliases and nicknames, including Mariosh, Ock, Mother Mary, Mary Manson, Linda D. Manson and Christine Marie Yu. Manson's presentation of himself. Actor Al Lewis, who had Manson babysit his children on a couple of occasions, described him as a nice guy when I knew him. Through Phil Kaufman, Manson got an introduction to young Universal Studios producer Gary Stromberg, then working on a film adaptation of The Life of Jesus set in modern America with The Black Jesus. 
and Southern Redneck Romans. Stromberg thought Manson made interesting suggestions about what Jesus might do in a situation, seeming strangely attuned to the role. To illustrate the place of women he had one of his women kiss his feet, but then kissed hers in return. At the beach one day, Stromberg watched while Manson preached against a materialistic outlook only, to be questioned about his well-furnished bus. Nonchalant, he tossed the bus keys to the doubter who promptly drove it away while Manson watched apparently unconcerned. According to Stromberg, Manson had a dynamic personality with an ability to read a person's weakness and play them, trying to co-opt an influential individual from a motorcycle gang. By granting him access to family, women, Manson claimed to be sexually pathetic and convinced the biker that his outsized endowment was all that kept the family females at Spahn Ranch. On one occasion, the enraged father of a runaway girl who had joined the family pointed a shotgun at Manson and told him he was about to die. Manson quietly invited him in. Involvement with Wilson, Melcher, et al. The events that would culminate in the murders were set in motion in late spring 1968, when Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys picked up two hitchhiking Manson women, Patricia Cranwinkle and Ella Jo Bailey, and brought them to his Pacific Palisades house for a few hours. Returning home in the early hours of the following morning from a night recording session, Wilson was greeted in the driveway of his own residence by Manson, who emerged from the house. Uncomfortable, Wilson asked the stranger whether he intended to hurt him. Assuring him he had no such intent, Manson began kissing Wilson's feet. Inside the house, Wilson discovered twelve strangers, mostly women, over the next few months, as their number doubled. The family members who made themselves part of Wilson's Sunset Boulevard household cost him approximately $100,000. This included a large medical bill for treatment of their gonorrhea and $21,000 for the accidental destruction of his uninsured car, which they borrowed. Wilson would sing and talk with Manson, while the women were treated as servants to them both. Wilson paid for studio time to record songs written and performed by Manson. Wilson introduced Manson to entertainment business acquaintances. These included Greg Jacobson, Terry Melcher and Rudy Altabelli. Jacobson, who was impressed by the whole Charlie Manson package of artist, lifestylist, philosopher also paid to record Manson material. The account given in Manson in his own words is that Manson first met Wilson at a friend's San Francisco house where Manson had gone to obtain cannabis. The drummer supposedly gave Manson his Sunset Boulevard address and invited him to stop by when he came to Los Angeles. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.